One moth says to the other moth, Here, have a bite of this delicious sweater. Oh, no, I can't, said the second moth. I've given them up for Lent. <laughs> and like the moth, we are giving up Lent for Lent. I can't say both of those words differently. Robert told me to be sure to pronounce them differently, but I can't. Lent and Lent. Anyway, good morning again. God is the love in which I forgive. Can that go up on the screen? That is our affirmation for this third week of the Lenten season, or for our center, the season of light. Repeat three times with me, if you would, please. God is the love in which I forgive. God is the love in which I forgive. God is the love in which I forgive. This week we will all walk around in God's love. We want to feel and to fully enjoy the forgiveness that's God's gift to us. This is our dedication for the week ahead as we continue our lessons in light to allow God and the Holy Spirit to help us remember that there is nothing to forgive or to atone for or to sacrifice during the Lenten season. We only need to place in God's hands any burdens we are carrying in our lives so that we may awaken to the resurrected child of God that we truly are as we awaken to the light inside us. Therefore, let us use this time of Lent as a symbolic way of releasing the world's idea of sacrifice as we turn our hearts toward God and his perfect love for us. Begin to close your eyes now gently. Breathe in the light from the Christ candle and visualize the word peace bringing that energy to your mind and body as you begin to relax more and more with the sound of my voice. Peace, peace, peace. You came here this morning, despite the weather conditions, to experience that which you need at this particular time in your life to bring you peace, joy, love, and happiness and to remember that God is the love in which you forgive, forgiving yourself and all others. And you will receive that which you have asked for. Once again, let's go to that quiet place within and visualize yourself in a wonderful spring meadow with beautiful flowers blooming all around you. The sun is shining brightly. There's a gentle breeze blowing all around as you hear the singing of the birds in the background and hear the scampering of the small animals all around you. As you enter this loving and peaceful area, there are two beautiful, comfortable chairs sitting right in front of you, facing each other. And you see Jesus standing near them with outstretched arms as he bids you to come and sit with him. As you sit in one of the chairs, and Jesus sits in the other chair with your knees touching one another. He reaches out to hold both of your hands in his. Can you imagine just sitting there and touching knees and holding hands with Jesus? Now just allow yourself to fully feel the warmth and energy of his love and his peace flowing into every cell of your being. God is the love in which you forgive, in which you forgive, not God. For as workbook lesson 46 tells us, God does not forgive, for he is never condemned. But through his love, we find the strength to look at the seemingly pains of our lives and only see the calls for love. And as we recognize the pains for what they truly are, false beliefs, fears, or unforgiveness, we recognize our innocence and that of all our brothers. 
This week we enter into our desire to not only believe God's forgiving mercy to us, but to experience it, to accept it, and to celebrate it. How much that must be God's own desire for each of us this week and every day. Just as, just as Jesus rolled away the stone from the front of the cave, so he invites each of us to roll away the stones of fear from our own lives, to roll away the stones of feeling separate from God, to roll away our own cave of darkness, to be free and unlimited in all areas of this body we are living in. All of this can be accomplished with forgiveness, forgiveness of self, and of all projections we place on all of our relationships. For forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. It doesn't pardon sins and make them real. It sees there was no sin, and in that view are all of our sins forgiven. How God must rejoice in our coming to know how much we are loved and forgiven. What is sin except a false idea about God's Son? Forgiveness merely sees its falsity and therefore lets it go. What then is free to take its place is now the will of God. You need do nothing then and let forgiveness and the Holy Spirit show you what to do, remaining strong in hope and certain of your ultimate success because God is the love in which you forgive. As you continue to sit quietly holding hands with Jesus, listen now to his voice with your inner awareness and you will receive a very special message from him meant just for you. This special message fills you with love and peace and joy and understanding and is your own personal answer to any burdens that you have been carrying with you. Jesus now takes all those false beliefs from you and fills that now empty space in your heart with pure, unconditional light and love, for that is all that we truly are. As Jesus begins to rise from his chair, he enfolds you fully in his arms and kisses both of your hands as you say goodbye. And now you leave the beautiful meadow and begin to slowly return to this time and place 
with total memory of your conversation with Jesus. And with your eyes still closed, silently repeat after me. The Christ in me forgives and heals all human hearts. As I freely forgive, I am forgiven. For God is the love in which I forgive. I am free. I am unlimited. I am a precious and perfect child of God. You may now open your eyes or remain in silent meditation as we listen to Cassie's beautiful voice. And so it is. the guilt that brings me pain now is the time for me to let go of the shame the past is behind me I see a new I'm ready for my change forgiveness, I realize my oneness with God. 